Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Malley here with the Hurry Cannot Look In discussion for September 22nd, 2022, recorded on 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about this afternoon, including Hurricane Fiona's massive impacts expected to portions of Atlantic Canada and a significant hurricane threat increasing for portions of the Caribbean and potentially even the United States. So let's go and jump strands and everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that we have a very busy Atlantic basin. First of all, up here we have Hurricane Fiona approaching Bermuda. We have Invest Area 98L, Tropical Storm Gaston, and two other tropical waves back here that will need to be monitored over the next couple of days. If we take a look here just real quickly at the tropical weather outlook again, we see that we have Hurricane Fiona, Category 4 still, and Gaston. 98L, we have this tropical disturbance, and then 90L off the coast of Africa. Now, looking at Hurricane Fiona this afternoon, we noticed that the storm, again, is still not the best, but it is still developing those deep convective bursts around that center. And we noticed that, again, we do have an eye structure, but it has clouded over from what we were dealing with just a few days ago. And this is generally a result of that southwesterly shear beginning to increase and the sea surface temperatures beginning to drop as this races off towards the north and east here. This is the island of Bermuda run off the top of the screen, and uh, we could see some very substantial impacts to there. Now, if we look here at the recon plane that was in there from earlier today, we notice that the pressure still remained around 938 to 937 millibars, and we still had some very strong winds here near Category 4 intensity on the southeastern side here, just about 115 to 100, and, or I'm sorry, about 125 to 130 miles per hour here on the southeastern quadrant but what you notice here is that the hurricane force winds extend out very far from the center of circulation and if we look here at the track forecast this is expected to be moving off towards the north and east now this will be weakening into a category three storm later today and tomorrow as it picks up forward speed but notice that it will pass very close to the island of bermuda here and we do have a hurricane warning now in effect for the island of Bermuda as this is expected to bring hurricane conditions to portions or to really all of Bermuda over the next day or two. And then by Friday, late, kind of late in the morning Friday, this begins to pull away. And then this sets its sights on Newfoundland and Atlantic Canada near Halifax and around that vicinity as a, a weakening but still very intense mid-latitude cyclone by Saturday morning. And if we take a look here at the watch warning map at this point, we do have a hurricane watch that is in effect for most of this part over here. And you can actually see here that we have a hurricane watch for Halifax and a tropical storm watch that goes all the way to the Maine and Canada borders here. So we do have a, a hurricane watch that is in effect here, tropical storm watches as well, all the way out to near St. John's. Now, the overall risk impact is expected to be very significant here. We have a high risk of impacts, especially across portions of Halifax and Atlantic Canada to the west of St. John's. And the further towards the east you go away from the circulation and away from that wind field, uh, obviously the risk decreases. But even so, a track that would take it mostly something like that would still be very detrimental especially on the eastern side as all that storm surge gets pumped in and we end up dealing with that storm surge and heavy rainfall threat uh, but over the next couple of days this is expected to be a very significant problem here and the wind uh, the wind forecast here is expected to be over 80 miles per hour in spots especially from around halifax and east and northeastward we expect winds that could be as high as 80 miles per hour sustained with, of course, uh, lesser wind off towards the west on the western side of the circulation and closer to St. John's. This is expected to be a very massive system. It will bring a large widespread potential impacts, potential for a very significant storm uh, coming to that vicinity. So it is important to kind of just keep in mind uh, that we will be talking about very significant impacts and the potential for even some historic impacts as well. And I do uh, refer you to your local uh, government uh, office and local emergency management officials for the most up-to-date information for your specific area for these regions. Now, focusing on the rest of the tropics today to save time, we're not going to cover Tropical Storm Gaston or these two other systems. We'll mainly now be focusing on Invest Area 98L located in the, uh, in the Eastern Caribbean at this point. 
we look at the visible satellite imagery from today, we notice that the center or apparent circulation has actually moved now over water and we are seeing signs of potential consolidation uh, with the low level circulation that is trying to develop in this region near the ABC Island chain and kind of moving off towards the Northwest here, North of South America at this point. Uh, if we look here at the zoomed out visible satellite, we still notice that there is a lot of shear impacting the storm still. And this is uh, in part because of Fiona's outflow still shearing the storm. This is unlikely to change for several days as the storm tries to move towards the northwest, but conditions do improve, especially uh, the closer to Jamaica you get. Now, looking at the scatterometer here, we notice that uh, today we do have what appears to be an elongated but closed low-level circulation. We notice that, again, we kind of have this elongation uh, but we notice that the wind barbs in here clearly indicate that we have a counterclockwise circulation. And this indicates to me that we do have that uh, circulation that is in here and is trying to become better organized. Uh, but it is going to struggle for the next several days because, again, we do have uh, some of that shear. Uh, as this begins to move northwest, though, the environment does change. Now, but look here at a tweet from Trace Jones here, FL Weather underscore WX. Go follow him. He's an amazing person and knows a lot about weather and meteorology. Uh, he also does indicate the same thing here that, uh, again, the latitude, how much latitude that 98, 98L will gain in the next 24 to 48 hours is going to have some significant track implications down the road and especially for potential impacts to Florida or the Gulf Coast here or potentially even uh, skirting the southern Florida Peninsula, and we'll talk about that here now. So if we look at the GFS forecast, this is the 12Z run here. This is uh, 12Z valid for 2 a.m. tomorrow morning. We notice that our two players on the board right now, we have Hurricane Fiona that will be near Bermuda at that point, and this is Invest Area 98L down here. Now we notice that 98L has actually trended a little bit upwards in terms of development, uh, but over the next couple of days, again, any development will likely be slow to occur. And once this nears Jamaica, development of this system becomes a lot more likely. And we end up with a developing hurricane in the model field uh, between Cancun and um, Cuba at this particular point on Tuesday, Monday evening going into Tuesday of next week. Now, the GFS here is a little bit wonky because it does have some downshear reformations and uh, convective feedback problems in a mature hurricane at this point, which is a little weird. And so the GFS is doing some very weird things. Other, but I will say, though, it has taken a very significant shift back towards the east over the last couple of runs. And this, to me, indicates that some of the other models that we've been seeing making an eastward shift is certainly a very valid possibility. Now, if we look at how the upper level environment could play out, uh, this is the 060 run of the H wharf here. This is uh, valid for 8 a.m. Uh, this morning. We'll move this forward in time. This is by about 11 a.m. on Friday. We notice that again, we still have this shear coming out of Fiona and an upper level ridge in part because of Fiona's helping here that is creating all of this shear over top of the system. However, we notice this upper level trough right here also moving westward. This is going to erode this shear and allow our storm to become better organized by the time it gets to near Jamaica. So we notice on this particular run here of the, the uh, H wharf, we notice that we have a developing storm south of Jamaica within about 72 hours. This does call for a little bit of preparation for the island of Jamaica because we could be talking about some impacts to the island uh, depending on where this exactly consolidates. It is entirely possible and not out of the realm uh, right now of, an, of possibilities that we could be talking about some type of tropical cyclone impacts to the island of Jamaica, whether that just be some heavy rainfall and passing gusty winds from time to time, or whether that's kind of more uh, intense wind and intense rainfall uh, is yet to be determined. But we could be talking about at least some impacts to the island beginning on Sunday and then as the storm moves off towards the north and west here, we notice that we start developing an upper level anti-cyclone, very healthy outflow pattern. We get increased divergence from a trough over Florida or kind of a cold front slash trough over Florida. 
and this helps to rapidly intensify and explode the storm into what will likely be uh, a very intense hurricane and on this particular run of the h wharf this carries it across cuba and positions this uh, very close to florida within about five days this would be about 8 a.m next tuesday and we could be talking about a storm that ends up finding itself pretty close to florida within just a couple of days if we look at the model forecast tracks here for 90AL, again, this is the 12Z run valid uh, initialized uh, today. We notice, again, there's still a lot of track uncertainty here. Some models do bring this right over the Florida Peninsula, while others continue this kind of right over Cuba, and then eventually would curve this likely into the Florida Panhandle. And there's then these two outlier models here. This is the deterministic GFS and the deterministic HMON. Uh, which is a hurricane specific model that brings this over the Yucatan Peninsula and then picks this up uh, towards the north and west at some point. Although, of course, the latest GFS has shifted back in line with all of these other forecast runs. Now, if we look at the GFS ensembles, however, there is a lot, I mean, there's still a lot of uncertainty, but there's kind of two camps that we're looking at. You can see the first camp that we're looking at is a weaker low-end solution that finds its way moving westward and is unable to gain much latitude. Thus, this basically forces this into the Yucatan Peninsula, potentially then crossing back into the Gulf uh, sometime within a couple of, of days to about maybe the next week or so. And then kind of the more obvious camp, we have the ensemble mean and most of the members bringing this to major hurricane intensity as this enters the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, and then recurving this back towards the north and east at some particular point. Some members do continue this more towards the north and west. However, it seems pretty evident that we will be talking about this uh, trough that is located to the north here, digging in and picking this thing up towards the north and east. Now, if we look at all the possibilities of where a storm could be, let's take a look here at the Super Ensemble blend. This is the Super Ensemble uh, Zero Z run. So we have 139 different ensemble members here, including the deterministic Euro, GFS, and UK MET models uh, that we have to rely on here. And so over the next couple of days, we still have a, we have a very tightly clustered um, area for the next about 54 hours. However, we start to notice divergence uh, beginning really by about hour 78. We have an ellipse at this point, which is growing, and some members that are further towards the south here indicating a much weaker storm and potentially dealing with some land interaction for Central America. However, most of the ensemble guidance at this point continues to indicate a storm kind of down the center here south of Jamaica. Uh, and then eventually we start dealing with, by about day five, we end up with a pretty large spread here of potential locations. We could have, again, this path where we have a weaker solution that ends up towards uh, you know, Cancun and Belize and the Yucatan Peninsula. We could also be dealing with a little bit of a stronger storm and potentially recurving something like this that it impacts Cuba and brings extremely limited impacts to Florida but is more of a Bahamas threat. And most of the members uh, either agree on this being something potentially for south or kind of southwest Florida uh, or this ends up kind of riding into the Gulf and then turning northeastward later at some point closer uh, to the Florida Big Bend region, the Florida Panhandle. Uh, some members continue out west from there. So there is a lot of uncertainty, and we notice that, again, there are, you know, a handful of, of members that cannot be discounted that, you know, are a little bit further uh, towards the east and certainly a little bit faster uh, over the next couple of days. Now, irregardless, uh, if this does decide to take a track into the Florida, or, or kind of into the Gulf of Mexico, rather, this is the moisture field, and we notice what's happening is we have this uh, trough and associated cold front by definition only that's making its way into Florida. And as it does so, this is now lifting uh, 98L towards the north at this point. And on the GFS forecast here, this is a, a strengthening hurricane uh, by about day five. Now, you notice that in combination with the upper level divergence and there is going to be a little bit of shear over top of 98L as it enters the Gulf here, this is going to create a moisture field that would be spread far eastward, even well away. I mean, we're talking hundreds of miles over, you know, 800 miles away from the circulation. We have this moisture plume, especially that spreads over the Florida Peninsula and the Florida Keys at this point. 
And this could bring some very significant rainfall. Even if uh, Florida does not take a direct hit from 98L, there will likely be some associated rainfall with this system if this decides to make a track into the Gulf. So again, there is the potential that we could be dealing with some impacts at this particular time to Florida. Uh, we could be dealing with impacts potentially for the Bahamas, although again, that threat is limited right now. Uh, but there is certainly the threat for that. Uh, but again, my greatest concern right now is immediately going to be, of course, uh, for portions of the Caribbean. Uh, but again, it, it would not be totally unsurprising to see a storm potentially impact the Florida Peninsula or Florida Panhandle uh, within uh, sometime late next week. All right. So we do have a lot to talk about. We have a lot going on and certainly need to be prepared for it, but certainly nothing to panic about right now. Uh, don't go panic buying or, or anything like that. We're not dealing with, you know, a mega category five cataclysmic storm, uh, but we will potentially have impacts to be talking about to the Gulf Coast region, potentially even Florida uh, within the next couple of days into next week. All right. So that being said, I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll be talking to you guys again some more later this evening.